So we have the righteousness of God and we have self-righteousness. Now Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because that gospel reveals the righteousness of God. Because the gospel reveals the righteousness of God, there is a tendency for the one who preaches the gospel that reveals the righteousness of God to be ashamed. Look at it. You can see that boldness. Such boldness emanating from the self-righteous Pharisees. They faced him and said, you help. Give God praise with this one that you said you can see. Okay, but what did he do? We are not sure. He, the guy said, ah, he, he opened my eyes. And we don't care. Ah, but you guys know that since the world began, only the people that love God are heard by God. <laughs> they say, eh, you're teaching us. Very bold. A false sense of boldness accompanies self-righteous men. They are very bold. Forward. The friend of mine said, false doctrine is loud. Very loud. People disregard the scriptures and they are loud about it. <laughs> Paul had to steer himself. says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because there were people trying to make him ashamed. Unstable men. There's nothing shameful with self-righteousness. The self-righteous man projects himself as better than others. In the gospel of Christ, no one is given special treatment. All have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. We'll see that later, don't worry. So, self-righteousness is the forte of man-made religion. In their mind, in the mind of the self-righteous, God has now, pay attention to this. God has made some demands. And this religion has met those demands. That is self-righteousness defined. In their minds, God dis demanded this. And then, they met those demands. They met those demands. And having met those demands... They have pleased God. In Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, verse 9, and he spoke this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Look at that. They trusted in themselves as self righteousness. And then they what? Despised others. They despised others. This is Jesus speaking. He said, two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterous, or even as this publican. Imagine, someone is giving thanks to God and is making reference to another thing. He says, I'm not like these people. Some people use it to trigger themselves to praise God in church. Yeah, hallelujah. I mean, if you are here, you are here, you, you woke up this morning, your hand is there, your leg is there. You think it is by your power? There are others who slept like you last night. Imagine for praise and worship. They did not wake up this morning. As I was coming to the place, to, to the church, I saw a bear who jumped down into the lagoon. Church members now, wow, that's self-righteousness. Yeah. We are not, they, they now want to, they want to color it with, the, with, with grace. I said, it's not that we are better than them. Okay, it's by what then? 
<laughs> Why were you chosen? And the other person you know, neglected. <laughs> why why you that's not place worship? That's gloating. You gloat. So look at that. So I'm not like other men, extortioners, or just adulterers, even as this publican. Wow. Look at it. He started reeling out his, his CV. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Verse 13. The publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14. Jesus, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Self-righteousness is what is found in religion. The gospel, on the other hand, reveals the righteousness of God. Look at that man. Just said, I do this, I do that. I am better than this. I am not like that. You find people in church, for example, you are trying to correct them for something for something wrong that they've done. They are not looking for soft landing. But after all, I'm not the only person that did it. That's self righteousness speaking. I, I told the folks in church one time. I said, if ten of us do something that is wrong, and for whatever reason, the leader of the church or the leader of the fellowship disciplines. One person alone. This means me alone. My attitude should be that of humility. And take. And what about the other night? It's none of my business. That is on the that's the business of the leader. It's not mine. Of course, he is wrong for, for being partial. But I have already done one wrong already. I'm not in a position to judge the wrong of another person. I should take the judgment in good faith. I have. I have done wrong. It was, it was not that I was being punished for something I did not. I did wrong. So I take the discipline in good faith. I take the discipline with meekness and a heart of repentance. I won't start trying to make, uh, well, what about this person? What about this person? What about, am I the only person? That you have multitude doing something wrong doesn't make it right. That they escape the punishment and you did not escape the punishment does not make you being punished for the wrong, wrong. You were right to be punished because you done something like this. That's justice. That's justice. It is on the, it's not on the conscience of the leader to know the reason why he exonerated the other, the other night. That's it. Hallelujah. So, self-righteousness considers themselves better than other people. But you swear, what we find in Christ is this, since we esteem others better than ourselves. That's the gospel. That's what you will find in the gospel. Because the gospel would have created in your heart is a culture that esteems other men, esteem other men honors other men better than himself. Self-righteousness honors himself better than others. Hallelujah. Look at this. In Job chapter 1, is Job, the Old Testament, there was a man in the land whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And they were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance was also seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, five hundred she asses. And he was in a very great household. So this one was the greatest of all men it is. There's four. And this one going to his sons went to feast in their in their houses, everyone his day. 
and sent and called for the three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And so it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This did Job continually. So long before calamity, and everyone knew the story of Job, we know that. Long before there was calamity, long before the, the, the evil that happened to Job, we already find in Job a demonstration of self-righteousness. It was there. It was self-righteousness that made Job think his children were always sinful. That's self-righteousness. And if you read the book of Job, you will see his self-righteousness play out in several chapters. Him screaming out, screaming out, and calling himself righteous and all that. So, the gospel reveals, let's go back to Romans 1 again. I just said, from not ashamed, verse 16, Romans 1 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first, and then also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. So the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. Hallelujah. The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. So, the gospel does not consult with your good works. The gospel reveals the good works of God. You will get all this as we go on in the subsequent episodes. Beautiful, beautiful. So, what we will find in the gospel is the testimony of the righteousness of God. The testimony of the righteousness of God. Let's read um, this um, text. We also have like two more texts and then we'll close. Romans 3, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law said, he says to them who are under the law. Look at this. That every mouth may be what? Stopped. And all the world may become guilty. So the law was given to make men guilty. When I first heard that statement by one of my teachers, it blew my heart. He says the law of Moses was not given for men to keep. It was actually given for men to break it. It was given to show men the inadequacy in man. The weakness of man. He says the law was given that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty for God. All that world, obviously. Because it was all, those were under the law. It was to show them the, 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 the weakness. The law was given to show man his failure. To show how it is impossible for man in his best state to attain righteousness. But you see, one of the things with hypocrisy is that even the law was now twisted. It was bent. It was so bent that by the time Jesus came, <laughs> it was corrupted. There were Pharisees who called themselves teachers of the law, blameless by the law. But they were not blameless according to the law's prescription. They were blameless according to their own estimation and twisting of the law. The law was given to make man guilty before God. To, sh to bring man to the end of himself. To make a man realize that he is a wretched man. Like Romans 7 would say, Oh, wretched man that I am. It was the law that brought that consciousness. The consciousness of the law brings a consciousness of wretchedness. 
That is the proper use of the law. Is to make the sinner recognize that he is a sinner and needs a savior. Now we know that what is the law said, verse 19, it says to them, who are under the law, that every man may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Wow. But now, glory to God, but now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. So we find, now, we find the law which was to bring man to the end of himself, then when man gets to the end of himself, he will now see what? The righteousness of God. He said the righteousness of God is manifest without the law, being witnessed by the Lord prophet, that means it was prophesied in the Old Testament writings. He says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. He says the righteousness of God is by faith of Jesus is unto all, all, and upon all that believe. For there is no difference. Did you see that? There, there is no room for self-righteousness. There is no difference. There is no difference. There is no di- just like the, the law puts all concluded all under sin. The righteousness of God, the righteousness of God in Christ. Puts no difference in those men that have been it. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. We trust that you were blessed by the teaching. For further inquiries about learning Christ to Pastor Dio, kindly send us a mail at hagiocitychurch at gmail.com. We'll be glad to answer your questions. Till the next broadcast, we see Jesus only.